Hi, this is Joseph Sapin Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. Dreamio has announced a new low latency query technology that delivers sub-second query response times on cloud data lakes. What it means is that companies can run production business intelligence workloads directly on Amazon S3 and Azure Data Lake storage without having to move data into data warehouses. To learn more about this new technology, these features, and its implications, we have with us Tomer Shiran, co-founder and chief product officer at Dremio. Tomer, it's good to have you on the show once again. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. Before we get started, uh, just give us a recap. What does Dremio do? Yeah, so Dremio is a data lake engine, and we we really allow uh, companies to query data directly on data lake storage, uh, in particular on S3 uh, on Amazon and ADLS on Azure, and allow them to get really fast response times uh, on that data. And then we also provide a semantic layer that makes it very easy to consume the data and secure the data um, and really make it so that you don't have to move data into you know, data warehouses and build cubes and extracts and aggregation tables and all that stuff that companies have to do in order to get value out of their data. Uh, now, let's talk about the uh, announcement you're making today. Sure. So if you think about the trends in the industry, uh, cloud data lake storage, and again, S3 and ADLS in particular, they've become the system of record in the cloud. So whether it's enterprises that are moving to the cloud or it's companies that were born in the cloud, most data now is landing in these systems, in these object stores, um, which is amazing if you think about it. We, we have data being centralized in one place, and the reason for that is that these systems are very uh, inexpensive and scalable and easy to manage. Um, but the, the downside is that it's never really been possible to run your production BI workloads, um, especially your dashboards, directly on those data repositories. Um, and so, uh, you know, companies are left with really two bad choices. One is you get slow queries, you run something like Hive or Presto or uh, just a kind of a SQL engine on, on that data. And of course you're unhappy. So the, the company um, and the, the data consumers themselves, they, they don't tolerate that. Uh, and then what ends up happening is that uh, the company has to move data, the, you know, the data engineering team has to start moving data and copying it from the uh, data lake storage into, you know, a data warehouse. And uh, and that's a lot of work, just just copying it and constantly keeping that in sync. That's extremely difficult to do uh, and very expensive. And are, are like companies uh, still kind of uh, is storing data in data warehouses? Because as you rightly said, you know, it's just uh, too much. Is it like some 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 uh, niche cases, or in general, that is the only solution that was available to them to move data to warehouse if they have to run some of these queries. Yeah, I think for many years, and in fact, you could argue decades, uh, data warehouses were the uh, the solution to this problem. So it's a very familiar solution, and I think in the last few years there have been companies like uh, you know Snowflake and, and Redshift and, and so forth from from Amazon that uh, have provided better data warehouses and you know more flexible data warehouses. Uh, but fundamentally, the same same architecture, right? The same approach is you you have to get your data into that one system where it's going to be stored, and now then you're going to access the data through that one system, and um, very similar to, to how things have been done for for a very long time. Uh, but with this change in the industry, um, in terms of uh, uh, you know the kind of cloud architectures and the fact that so much of the data anyway is landing in S3, you know companies are starting to wonder, well, if I got all this data here, why do I have to move it into another location and keep those two things in sync? why isn't there a technology that allows me to do what I need to do directly on the data? Um, and that's that's what Dremio comes to solve. Um, and with this new release, really focused on the the bread and butter use case of analytics in the enterprise, which is uh, BI and BI dashboards. So, so does this technology also mean that it will eliminate the need for moving data? Or there are still a lot of uh, cases, workloads, uh, where they still have to do that? Or this was one of the factors or reasons they were moving data back and forth? I think this was uh, probably the biggest reason, um, maybe not the only reason, but the, the biggest reason why uh, companies were were moving the data, right? They, they were moving it. You know, nobody wants to move data. Um, people only move data if they have to. Um, and so there were still reasons why they had to, and, and there will always be some reasons, but I think those reasons are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller over time, right? As we get more capabilities and more technology that allows us to achieve kind of interactive query response times and sub-second response times on data lake storage, well, then there's no longer that reason, right? And, you know, as uh, you look at kind of over the, the next few months, um, as these cloud data lakes are, are going to have capabilities such as uh, transactions and inserts, updates, deletes, and, and time travel, uh, you know, there will continue to be less and less reasons to, to move the data 
um, into a data warehouse. You alluded to this in the beginning, but uh, can you give some examples of some use cases uh, of you know leveraging this technology, low latency, running queries without having to worry about moving data, and you can do it almost in the real time. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, a company I can't name, one of the largest tech companies uh, in the world, and uh, you know they have a lot of executive dashboards um, that were uh, were running and are being used daily by the the executive team, and these are very very important dashboards to the to the, the core business of the company, um, and. For them, their 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 data sits in S3, like like so many companies these days. Whether it gets created there or put there, you know, doesn't matter. Um, but uh, they they were going through this process of kind of pre-processing pre-processing the data on S3, copying that into a data warehouse, um, and then from there actually creating these additional data marts uh, that were maybe pre-aggregated and kind of pre-partitioned to enable faster uh, response times for for their dashboards. But that complexity, all of those layers of the stack to you know, where, where data had to be moved and, and transformed from one system to another, that led to um, uh, a time to analytics uh, of three to six weeks. So every time one of the executives wanted to uh, make a change to the dashboard or wanted to add some new data set, that was a three to six week engineering project to do that. And, and that was just like really, really painful for that that company because you know the, they had to be way more agile than that. And so uh, their goal in, in working with Dremio was to get this down to be a same day kind of thing, right? If, if I want to change something in my dashboard, I should be able to do that now. The, the data team should be able to uh, do that immediately and not have to go through you know multiple sprints of engineering and testing and, and so forth uh, because of all that complexity. So if you take away complexity, the time to analytics goes down, and it goes down from many weeks to, you know, potentially instantaneously, right, or, or minutes. How is edge computing, where a lot of companies are moving a lot of intelligence at the edge itself, they're not sending a lot of data to the cloud for so many reasons. What role will Dremio play in that space? You know, we we're involved in in many IoT use cases. So many of our um, Many of our companies, or many of the largest IoT players out there, um, actually rely on Dremio to to process data. Um, and so, you know, this is data being collected from uh, in in one company. It's um, it's it's airline air, air travel um, engines, um, and those produce a lot of data. In another case, it's uh, um, for example, we are uh, powering the analytics system in Software AG's uh, IoT platform. It's actually you know, that Dremio is, is, is what they call the Cumulosity Data Hub. Um, and that's enabling a variety of use cases ranging from, you know, wind turbines to, um, you know, robots that paint all the cars that, that we buy, right? And th- those things produce terabytes of, of data a day. And, um, you know, the, these uh, manufacturing use cases and, and these IoT use cases, they need to be able to analyze that data, understand what happened, were there any problems that, that happened, and kind of go back in time. Um, so I think that's a... Uh, that's a very important use case for us is, is IoT. Um, in some cases, uh, some of the data is getting processed on the edge, but where Dremio comes into, into the picture is really more when the data is being collected and, and stored for historical you know, analysis purposes, right? Or for uh, you know, data exploration or understanding what happened, uh, as opposed to, you know, there's also a different set of use cases that happens in, in IoT, especially where you want to be able to respond to something locally in, on the edge, right? Whether it's a, a factory or a, a cruise ship, um, and you need to be able to do something immediately. Um, I think that's a different kind of set of use cases, really. This is becoming a very competitive and crowded space. You know, it's a it's a busy market. How do you kind of plan to stay competitive? What edge? I mean, uh, this this latest announcement is a very good example of how you're keeping your edge sharp. But but still, talk about you know how do you plan to kind of stand out in the market? Yeah, you know, I think cloud data analytics is one of the biggest uh, priorities for for every company now. Right? I think most companies now realize that data is their primary asset. The only way they're going to stay uh, competitive or or be competitive is is by leveraging their data. So I think the the size of the market, first of all, is is enormous, and you have all this migration to the cloud, and uh, there's a big need out there, right? And I think fundamentally there are um, uh, there are really two approaches. Uh, there's kind of the the, the more traditional and familiar approach for, for many companies, which is, well, let's let's put our data in a data warehouse, right? And so you've seen the you know the success of uh, uh, Snowflake, their recent IPO, and um, you know Redshift is, is broadly used in the cloud, and, and so that's one architectural approach that companies have. Uh, but I think that if you look at what's happened in history, is that typically companies don't want to move the data, and they only move it when they have to, and that's you know enabling that to happen in the cloud is something that. Uh, Dremio is uh, 
uh, ahead of the game there. Um, we're, we're probably years ahead of the next uh, you know, competitor in that space in, in terms of the performance that we can deliver directly on cloud data lake storage. Um, it, just because architecture, it's a very different architecture from how you would design a data warehouse, right? Like data warehouses are all built around the, the idea that data is going to be ingested into them. They're going to know in advance what that data looks like. They're going to organize that data. And if you want to provide the same performance or better, actually, than, than a data warehouse, uh, you have to do a lot of sophisticated things, which is, is what we've built inside of, of Dremio. Yeah, so if you look at this uh, space, uh, most of these the users are leveraging a lot of open source technology. Dremio is uh, one of those. So can you talk about you know the whole ecosystem, not just one company, what technologies they're leveraging, number one. Number two is that uh, it's also uh, great, you know, because there are so many different pieces, it, the, how tightly, whether they get integrated, or how seamless they work from each, uh, between each other. Can you talk about that? I think that's actually one of the most interesting and, and beneficial things about the, the kind of the modern cloud data lake architecture. Um, it, it's not just about one system, you know, just Dremio running queries on, on, on your storage. It's actually about the ability to have multiple best of breed engines processing the same data. So you, what you'll see is that, and what you'll find in the market is that, you know, companies use, you know, Dremio for their SQL queries, and then they use Databricks for their Spark queries, and, you know, they use Kafka for uh, data ingestion, um, and a variety of other tools. So the, 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 whole, the whole idea here is that you have this uh, uh, kind of independent data layer that has data stored in open source file and table formats. Um, we're seeing the rise of um, Apache Iceberg, for example, as created by Netflix and, and Apple, and, and um, involvement from uh, Stripe, Airbnb, a lot of the tech companies in ourselves, um, really kind of providing that next set of capabilities at the data and storage layer. Um, and then companies have the ability to take advantage of a variety of different execution engines on that same data, right? Dremio being the leader from a SQL and kind of enabling and you know ad hoc queries in, in BI, um, and then other services providing other capabilities, right? And that's uh, I think that's where, if you look at the the future, I think that's one of the big advantages that this open architecture has over kind of the monolithic data warehouse. Awesome. Tomer, thank you so much for taking time out today from your schedule and talk about not only this announcement, but also uh, ecosystem as well. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great uh, being here.